Magandang magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Reboron and welcome to another pre-recorded video lecture for the subject Theoretical Foundations in Nursing and this is actually our fifth week together in this class already. So last time we talked about the theory of Florence Nightingale and Peplo. This time we will be discussing about two new nursing theories which will be introduced to you later on and these are by Virginia Henderson and by Travel B. So let's start our discussion with a quote from Virginia Henderson saying, The nurse is temporarily the conscious of the unconscious, the love of life for the suicidal, the leg of the amputee, the eyes of the newly blind, a means of locomotion for the infant, knowledge and confidence for the mother, the multi-piece for those too weak or withdrawn to speak, and so on. So as you can see, Virginia Henderson gave us a definition of nursing that is really truly beautiful. And so we will be discussing her needs theory later on as we go along with our discussion. So please bring out your notes and uh, your ball pens and your papers so that we, you can follow along our discussion. Take the notes because you, this will also be part of your quiz later on. As mentioned earlier, the nurse theorist behind the 14 fundamental needs of man is Virginia Henderson. In a nutshell, Virginia Henderson is an American nurse theorist who conceptualized man as a whole complete and independent being who has 14 fundamental needs and the role of us nurses and other healthcare providers are to assist individuals to meet these fundamental needs of man. Virginia Henderson views man as a person who is complete and independent being with physiologic, sociological, and spiritual components and her view of man is actually shared with Sister Callista Roy, because Sister Callista Roy believes that man is a biopsychosocial spiritual being. So both Virginia Henderson and Sister Callista Roy looks at man and sees a complete being who is made up of uh, physical, sociological, and spiritual components. So that's uh, what's special about Virginia Henderson. Virginia Henderson is also regarded as the first lady of nursing and she was also regarded as the first international nurse. In her lifetime, she also was a full-time instructor and was advocate for the introduction of psychiatric nursing. She was an outstanding teacher and published several books and one of the most notable is the book called The Nature of Nursing. She was also selected as an American Nurse Association Hall of Famer and she was also the person behind the famous library of the Sigma Theta Tau, uh, which was named after her. And she was also considered one of the 51 pioneer nurses in Virginia. And she is also considered one of the best nurses in the 20th century. Such an amazing fit for such a wonderful woman. Another important detail that you have to remember regarding Virginia Henderson is that she is one of the many nurses who advocated for the independent practice of nursing from the practice of physician. Ibig sabihin nito, Virginia Henderson delineated our independent role as nurses and said that there are skill sets that we possess that do not really need the help of physicians and there are curative procedures or managements that we can do in our end as nurses that do not really uh, depend on the physician's order. So basically, she is the reason why we now have independent nursing practice. Now, how does Virginia Henderson view nursing? According to Virginia Henderson, nurses must promote the treatment plan that are prescribed by the physician. That's correct because we nurses are partners by the doc of the doctors and that nurses must also act independently. 
she means that there are things that we can independently do without seeking the approval or the prescription of doctors. A good example of this is when a person has fever. If your patient has fever, that patient is co-managed by the nurse and the physician and that the physician can order medication to the patient. So yung mismong doctor mag-order siya ng gamot na paracetamol sa pasyenteng ito and the nurse will be the one to administer this medication to this febrile patient. Now, when we speak of independent nursing measures, these are nursing care that we can give to our patients without needing the doctor's order. For example, if a patient has already been given this paracetamol which was ordered by the doctor and the patient's temperature isn't going down, we nurses can do tepid sponge bath. That is an independent nursing practice without needing the doctor's order. Aside from that, we can also change the clothes of our patients into something more cool. Uh, diba, pag yung pasyente natin is may fever, dinadamitan natin sila ng mga sando, mga ganong bagay, so that the patient's temperature will go down. Those things, ladies and gentlemen, are considered independent nursing care. Now, our nursing care must include all walks of life, from well to sick, from newborn to dying. This means that we care not just for the sick, but also for those who are well. We are also caring not just for the newborns, but also to the people who are in their sunset years of their lives. So, kumbaga, we nurses care for our patients from womb to tomb and our roles may be promotive, curative, and rehabilitative in nature. And we have roles that are independent of the, nurse, uh, of the physician's orders and there are also collaborative uh, nursing care that we can give to our patients, of course, with the help and order from the doctor. Now, because of this definition of uh, nursing, which was, which was forwarded by Virginia Henderson, we are now having an identity as nurses. Because of her belief that nursing is a practice or is a discipline that can be practiced independently apart from physicians, we are already having our signature role as healthcare providers. And that's all thanks to Virginia Henderson. Now, paano naman tinitignan ni Virginia Henderson yung mga patients or person? According to Virginia Henderson, a person is made up of physical, sociological, mental, and spiritual components. So, ibig sabihin nito, Virginia Henderson doesn't just look at the physical health of a person. She also considers their social and spiritual health. According to Virginia Henderson, the client requires assistance from the nurse or any healthcare provider to achieve the health and independence and in some cases, peaceful death. So, ibig sabihin, our role is not just to help our patients, sick patients recover. We are also in the position to promote the health of these healthy individuals. Aside from that, we are also taking care of geriatric patients and even if we cannot restore these geriatric or old patients into their usual glory, our the best thing that we can do as nurses is to help them attain a peaceful death. Now, Virginia Henderson also believes that a person must function to their utmost capability by maintaining their physiological and emotional balance. Virginia Henderson believes that we should not just be caring for the physical component of a person. We also look we have we also have to look at our patients holistically, taking into consideration their emotional components, their spiritual components, and psychological components. So that is how Virginia Henderson views the person. Now what is Virginia Henderson's idea of health? According to Virginia Henderson, 
Being healthy means having quality of life. Ibig sabihin nito that we are able to live our lives to our utmost potential. We are able to unlock our optimum skills, our optimum capabilities as human beings, and we are able to function to our fullest potential. Virginia Henderson also believes that health is influenced by external factors as well as internal factors. Ibig sabihin nito, our health is not just affected by our genes, our cells inside our body, but it is also affected by external environments. Aside from that, uh, Virginia and Henderson also believes that health promotion is more important than the care of the sick and that the, it is also our role as nurses to be able to use our knowledge and skills to not just help a patient recover but also promote a healthy patient's health even more. So yun po yung view ni Virginia Henderson on what health is. As mentioned earlier, Virginia Henderson also considers environment as a prime mover of the health of an individual. Ang belief kasi ni Her Virginia Henderson is that healthy individuals like us are able to control our environment okay, so that we can promote our health and become healthier. But Virginia Henderson also believes that if a person is already ill or infirm, meron na siyang sakit, their ability to control the environment is affected or diminished thereby the health of the individual is also compromised. So yun po yung belief ni Virginia Henderson that an individual patient who is healthy is able to control the environment for their benefit. However, kung ikaw daw ay may sakit, nawawala yung capability mo to control your environment and if you are not able to control your environment, it becomes unhealthy, therefore, it boomerangs back to you. So yun po yung belief ni Virginia Henderson in her theory or in her meta-paradigm of nursing referring to the environment. I have been mentioning the 14 fundamental needs of man since the start of this video. And I think it's now time for us to look into the 14 components of Virginia Henderson's nursing needs theory. The first fundamental need of man, according to Virginia Henderson, is to breathe normally. Di ba nga sinasabi nila that we have the ABCs? Our priority should always be airway and breathing, which next is circulation. And according to Virginia Henderson, when a person is able to breathe normally, that person becomes healthy. Kaya nga po, when a person is uh, delivered, a baby is delivered by the mother, what do we prioritize? We clean the mouth, we keep clean the nose so that we can immediately establish breathing. So Virginia Henderson believes that it is a fundamental need of a person to be able to breathe normally and that as nurses, we should strive our best to assist our patients to be able to breathe normally. Kaya nga po kung may mga pasyente tayong may sipon, may ubo, or mga may bara sa bibig, we immediately give them measures to alleviate these symptoms or to remove the blockage that are present on the mouth of the patient because that should be one of our priorities, ang airway at breathing because according to Virginia Henderson, that is the number one fundamental need of man and without air or oxygen, man will cease to exist. Aside from that, the second fundamental need of man is to eat and drink adequately. And Virginia Henderson believes in the importance of using nutrition and dietetics to help a person to become healthy or to help a sick person to recover. So according to Virginia Henderson, we nurses should assist our patients to eat healthy foods and make better choices when it comes to their drinks. So always remember po ha, eat and drink adequately. When we speak of the word adequately, it means that a person should only be eating um, the proper amount of food and the proper type of food. Hindi dahil sa kumakain yung pasyente natin ay healthy na po siya, hindi po. People who are doing mukbang are not considered 
eating and drinking adequately because they are drinking and eating more than enough, more than their body needs. So, dapat po, we strike a balance between eating too much or not eating at all. So, dapat katamtaman lang. That is the meaning of the word eating and drinking adequately. Aside from that, Virginia Henderson also believes in the importance of eliminating body waste. We have to remember that it is also our prime responsibility as nurses to assist our patients to eliminate their body wastes. Hindi lang po ito ibig sabihin ay tulungan natin yung mga pasyente natin to go to the CR every time they uh, feel the need to use the uh, the restroom for their urination or for defecation. Hindi lang po yun ang mga roles natin as nurses. Aside from assisting our patients to go to the restroom to urinate and defecate, our role is also to promote healthy body waste elimination. At paano natin ginagawa yon? For example, a person is not urinating well. Anong mga dapat natin ginagawa as nurses? We tell them to drink or hydrate themselves. Drink plenty of fluids para po sila ay makaihi. And that they should avoid eating foods that are salty so that they can uh, avoid forming their own calcium oxalate stones or mga kidney stones na tinatawag natin. Aside from that, if a person has difficulty defecating, nahihirapan siyang tumae, what do we do as nurses? We tell them to ambulate or maglakad-lakad. We tell them also to eat plenty of foods that are rich in fiber like fruits and vegetables. Naiwasan yung mga matatabang pagkain that are rich in protein because these things usually are the culprits why a person will not be able to defecate. So, again, as nurses, we have this power to help our patients in the proper elimination of their body waste. Aside from that, another fundamental need of man is to move and maintain desirable posture. Kaya nga po as nurses, we try to uh, we try to motivate our patients to do at least 15 to 30 minutes of physical exercise. Tama po ba? Because one of our needs as a human being is to move, is to stand and maintain a desirable posture. Bakit po? Because if we allow a person to move, we also improve their circulation of the blood. So, yung mga blood po natin, mga blood vessels natin, they dilate when we are doing our exercise or movement. Kaya nga po, as nurses, one of our responsibilities also is to help those bedridden clients natin na hindi na makatayo, hindi na makalakad, we help to turn them from side to side. Kasi, if their body is stagnant, they develop bed sores. So, again, we nurses are given the responsibility to assist our patients to move and then maintain a desirable posture. Aside from that, one uh, fundamental need of man is also sleep and rest and relaxation. So, ibig sabihin nito, we also allow our patients to use the time that they have to sleep and rest so that their body can also regenerate itself. Um, according to Virginia Henderson, mahalaga po talaga ang sleep and rest and recreation because aside from the fact that it gives your body cells a chance to regenerate or recuperate uh, from the many damages that it has incurred over the many hours of wear and tear, naniniwala din si Virginia Henderson that resting and relaxing can also help maintain the overall health of a person because when you when you are relaxed when you are kunwari watching a movie or when you're resting your mental state also reaches equilibrium or balance even your emotional state also reaches equilibrium or balance so we use sleep and relaxation to safeguard not just the physical component of a person but also their social spiritual emotional and psychological component. So, napaka-importante po ng sleep and rest according to Virginia Henderson. Aside from those mentioned earlier, Virginia Henderson also believes 
that wearing suitable clothes is also one of the fundamental needs of man. Virginia Henderson believes in the influence of the environment when it comes to the health of the client. Imagine, kung yung isang tao po ay naka-jacket, naka-bonnet during the summer season. So the clothes of that person is not so suitable. So what happens? The health of that person wearing the jacket during a warm sunny day will become affected. In the same manner as when you are in Antarctica or when you are in Canada and when you are just using your trunks or your bikini, you're not wearing the suitable clothes. And because of the influence of the environment, you might get sick, you might catch a cold, or you might even get frostbite or mawalan na ng, ng uh, blood or circulation sa inyong different parts of the body and that uh, that hand or uh, that appendage may need to be cut off. So, ibig sabihin nito, we should also promote uh, to our patients the use of suitable clothes, especially when they are when they are uh, suffering from any illness or uh, infirmity. For example, you have a patient who is pregnant, and yung pregnant patient na ito ay merami siyang varicose veins. Okay? And you know very well that varicose veins can be prevented through the use of compression stockings. So as nurses, it is also our prime responsibility to teach our patients the use of suitable clothing to alleviate uh, these signs and symptoms from them. Kaya kung ikaw yung isang nurse at alam mo that the use of suitable clothes is also the fundamental need of man. Kung nakakita ka ng mga pasyenteng merong varicosities, you will tell them, Ma'am, maganda po na gumamit tayo ng mga compression stockings para mawala yung ating mga varicosities. So again, we have the power as nurses to manipulate these kinds of things to help our patients with their infirmity or their condition. Aside from that, number seven fundamental needs of man is maintaining body temperature within normal range by adjusting the clothing and modifying the environment. Again, this, this circles back to our fundamental need number six, which is selecting suitable clothes. Ibig sabihin nito, we nurses should be able to teach our patients to use suitable clothes or if not, use uh, measures to modify the environment. Uh, kunwari, yung mga pasyente natin is that they are they get colds okay meron silang sipon at ubo and they are they are inside um, a room with a very strong air conditioning now as nurses we tell them to lower down the the strength of the air conditioning unit and sabihin natin sir wag nyo masyadong lakasan yung aircon para yung mga pasyente natin ay hindi magkaubo at sipon. Again, we have the ability to influence our patients to modify their environment and use um, adequate clothing to maintain body temperature. Aside from that, it is also one of our fundamental needs to keep our body clean and well-groomed and to protect the integument. When we speak of integument, we are referring to the skin. And did you know that the skin is the first line of defense of the body? So, yung skin natin po, that's waterproof. Ibig sabihin nito, microbes cannot enter our skin. Depende na lang po yan kung sila ay may mga special na appendages that can penetrate us. But majority of the microbes that we have cannot directly penetrate our skin. Depende na lang kung ikaw ay may sugat. Kaya nga po, as much as possible, we try to keep the, the skin's integrity uh, to a maximum. Ayaw natin na nasusugatan yung mga mas pasyente natin because the skin is considered as the body's number one line of defense. Kaya nga po, we should tell our patients to keep their body clean because if the body is clean and well-groomed, we are able to protect the integrity of the integument. Di ba nga kapag kayo ay hindi naglo-lotion at dry na dry yung inyong mga skin or kunwari hindi kayo nag-chapsticks, uh, hindi kayo nag-lip gloss during a windy season, anong nangyayari? Nagbibitak-bitak yung skin. 
nagkakaroon ng mga cracks sa inyong mga bibig. And that leaves you vulnerable to the entry of microbes that can cause infection. Kaya nga po, as much as possible, we pre promote proper hygiene to our patients because we want them to protect their own integument, which is their first line of defense. Aside from that, another fundamental need of man is to avoid danger in the environment and to avoid injuring other, injuring other people in the process. Kaya nga po napansin nyo, di ba? Almost lahat po ng mga <coughs> bahay natin is we have fences. Bakit tayo may mga bakod sa bahay natin? Because we want to protect ourselves from certain dangers from the environment. Ayaw natin na pumasok yung mga bad guys sa bahay natin kaya tayo may mga bakod. Ayaw nating pasukin tayo ng mga wild animals. That's the reason why we lock our doors and close our windows. That is one of the fundamental needs of man. Now, bakit natin gagawin to? It Aside from the fact that we are preserving ourselves from these kinds of dangers from the environment, we are also protecting our psychological and mental health. Di ba nga po, pag kayo ay natutulog sa labas, hindi mahimbing yung tulog nyo because you fear that a person may come and attack you. So ibig sabihin nun, hindi po maayos yung tulog nyo because your mental health and your psychological health is affected because you are always on your toes thinking that you are in danger. Kaya nga po, importante to help our patients to establish this kind of feeling of safety para pumamit din natin yung kanilang mga psychological balance. Now, the tenth fundamental need of man is to communicate with others in expressing our emotions, our needs, our fears, or our opinions. Natry nyo na po ba na pagalitan kayo ng inyong mga magulang kasi meron kayong nagawang mali? And even if you try to reason out uh, why you did such thing, sasabihin nila, huwag ka nang sumagot, bastos kang bata ka. And what happens when they tell you that? You are not given the opportunity to speak your mind out. You are not given the opportunity to express yourself. What happens? Bumibigat yung loob mo, na naaapektuhan yung relationship mo with your parents, and also nawawalan ka ng gana to do the things that you previously loved. So meaning your mental health is affected when the the ability to communicate with others about your emotions, about your needs and fears are taken away from you. According to Virginia Henderson, napaka-importante po ng communication for us human beings and that we nurses must promote this communication with our patient. Kaya nga po, in our nurse-patient interaction, we always ask our patient, Ma'am, kamusta po kayo? Ma'am, ano pong nararamdaman nyo? Ma'am, maaari nyo po bang sabihin sa akin kung anong problema? Paano ko po kayo matutulungan? Because when we do, when we establish communication with our patients, we are able to build a strong nurse-patient interaction. Diyan po nagsisimula yung lahat. So as nurses, we need to allow our patients to communicate with us properly. So, tenth, uh, fundamental need of man is communication with other people. Aside from that, number 11 is we should allow our patients to worship the, uh, the, the, worship the ultimate being or worship the God that they believe in based on their faith. Di ba nga po, we, uh, out the religion, the world that we are living right now is made up of kaleido, a kaleidoscope of religions. Merong mga Jehovah's Witness, may mga, uh, hin, uh, may mga Iglesia ni Cristo, may mga Roman Catholics, may saksi, and so on and so forth. Ang dami pong religion sa ating mundo ngayon. We are worshiping other gods, we are uh, worshipping or we believe in uh, other principles, other philosophies, mga ganun. Now, as individuals, we have the right or it is our need to worship a person based on our belief system. And as nurses, 
you have to make sure that you are also respecting that faith of your patient. You do not immediately assume that your patient that you are caring for believe in the same God as you do. Example, yung mga meron tayong kasi mga pasyente na Jehovah's Witness. This Jehovah's Witness uh, do not want to undergo blood transfusion no matter the circumstance. Kahit ikamatay pa ng mga Jehovah's Witness ang hindi pag-receive ng blood transfusion, kahit dahil kailangan na kailangan na nila yung dugo, they will say no to blood transfusion because that is against their religion. And as nurses, even if it's very hard for us to understand or swallow that kind of train of thought, we should always respect their decision because they are acting based on their faith. Huwag mong sabihin na, ay, ang bobo-bobo mo, bakit ayaw mong mag ng blood transfusion, ay ikakamatay mo yan. Mas importante pa yung faith mo kesa sa, sa buhay mo. Don't tell that. Don't say that to your patient. Because they are acting based on their own belief system. And as, uh, as nurses, our role is to understand them and respect their decision. Okay? So, as nurses, dapat po kilalanin natin yung mga pasyente natin and so that we will understand their uh, expressions of faith better so that we can give them a more individualized or personalized approach in caring for our patients. Lagi nyong tatandaan na hindi porket Roman Catholic ka, lahat ng mga belief system mo ay pareho kayo sa mga pasyente. I also experienced when I was in in the the beginning years of my uh, career and then when i saw a person na hindi ko alam kung yung anong specific na religion niya but that person has a father who was um being revived by the doctor so sini CPR yung tatay ng pasyenteng yon and then uh, namatay yung tatay ng patient na yon and then i said Sir, wag na po kayong umiyak, okay lang po yan. Uh, isipin na lang po natin that your father is already in heaven. I told that person that. And bigla niya akong tinignan ng masama. Bakit? Because their religion does not believe in the concept of heaven and hell. Na pag namatay na yung isang tao, wala nang second chance, wala nang heaven. So, I was very naive back then. Ang feeling ko, lahat ng mga pasyente, Roman Catholic din, na naniniwala din sa parehong pinaniniwalaan ko. And as nurses, we should open our minds and hearts to the possibility that there are other patients that we have that do not worship the same God that we are worshiping. Alright? Another fundamental need of man is to work in such a way that there is a sense of accomplishment. A person should be able to live his life and attain self-actualization. Pag sinabi nating self-actualization, a person is happy with his or her own worth at meron siyang sense of accomplishment and he or she feels no regrets about the decisions that they have made over their uh, previous years of existence. So, as nurses, we should assist our patients into living that kind of life. We should assist. It is our responsibility as nurses to help them uh, have a sense of self-actualization. Di ba nga alam natin sa Maslow's hierarchy of needs, pinakamataas po yung self-actualization. And that is uh, one of our primary duties, especially to those patients who are old and dying. Kasi karamihan po sa mga pasyente natin na mga matatanda na is that they are beginning to questioning the life that they live. Marami silang mga regrets, marami silang mga pagsisisi in the past. And as nurses, we have to help them transition to accepting their faith and making them feel that their life was worth living. Aside from that, we have another fundamental need of man which is play. To play or to participate in various forms of recreation. Again, it's very important for us human beings to be able to have, uh, to do, I should say, things that we actually love or things that we actually enjoy. Kasi nga po, when you do something that you really enjoy doing, then work becomes play. 
Ibig sabihin natatanggal po yung ating mga stress, ating mga pagod sa katawan if we engage in recreational activities. And alam natin po na stress ang number one reason why patients are developing cancer, hypertension, heart diseases, stroke, mga things like that. And as nurses, it is our prime responsibility also to educate our patients into doing things that alleviate stress by encouraging them to do play or participate in various forms of recreation. And last fundamental need of man is to be educated and to be satisfied at, for their curiosity to be satisfied. According to Virginia Henderson, napaka-importante po na need ng isang tao ang matuto and yung mga answers nila ay masagot. Their curiosity should be satisfied. And as nurses, we have the ability to satisfy their curiosity and we have the ability to educate them because we are a learned discipline. Marami po tayong matututunan from our clinical experiences, from our personal experiences, and from our per empirical knowledge from our books and our training from our faculty and staff in the nursing profession. Now, dahil po tayo ay maraming karunungan, we have the ability to disseminate this information to our patients, especially with regards to their health. So again, nakita nyo po na from 1 to 14 na needs ng isang tao, fundamental needs of a person, we nurses have the ability to insert ourselves in these kinds of niches. Kaya napaka-importante po ng role natin as nurses in attaining these fundamental needs of a person according to Virginia Henderson. Now, on the mentioned 14 fundamental needs of a person, anong nga ba talaga yung role natin as nurses during the nurse-patient relationship? Now, we as nurses can be the substitute for our clients. Kunwari, di ba, sinabi natin kanina that one of our prime needs is grooming, personal hygiene. At kung hindi na kaya ng pasyente na gawin yun para sa sarili nila, we nurses can act as their substitute. Pwedeng tayo po yung magpaligo sa mga pasyente natin. If they cannot feed themselves, we will, uh, we will assume that role. So, dito po pumapasok yung role natin as caregivers. If these patients can no longer take good care of themselves, doon po pumapasok yung ating helping hands. We are the ones to do these things for our client. Aside from that, the nurse also is a helper to the client. We assist our patients in the process of partnership and collaboration. Lagi nyo pong tatandaan na hindi lang po yung goal natin as nurses is to serve as the servants of our clients. Hindi po yun. Sa mga pagkakataon na may sakit yung mga pasyente natin, yes, pwede natin silang tulungan. Yes, we can help them. Yes, 100% of the time tayong yung gumagawa ng mga paraan para sa kanila. But, in the event that our patient starts to recover from their illnesses, dapat po partnership na po yung mangyayari. Because we also want to, not just for our patients to recover, but we also want to promote their health. Right? So like I said, number three, the nurse is a partner of the patient. So yun po yung mga roles natin as Nurses in the Nurse-Patient Relationship, according to Virginia Henderson. Now, what is the, no, the role of nurses in the nurse-physician relationship? Ito naman po yung take or belief ni Virginia Henderson when it comes to our roles. Now, Henderson believes that nurses should function independently from physicians. There are things that we can independently do, like I mentioned a while ago, na hindi na mga kailangan ng doctor's order. Aside from that, Virginia and Henderson also asserts that we nurses do not uh, follow our doctor's order. Hindi po talaga tayo nagfa-follow sa mga doctor's order. Instead, we are doing this prescription or orders from the doctor because we are following a certain philosophy that allows 
physicians to give us order. Alam kasi natin na may mga bagay na hindi natin pwedeng gawin on our own. Like for example, we cannot immediately give medication to these patients without the doctor's order. Now, ang paniwala ni Virginia Henderson, alam natin ang mga gamot para sa ating mga pasyente. We do not need the doctor's order for us to know what kind of drug to be given to our patient. Because if you ask me, I'm a nurse. Tama? And if there is a patient here na merong paghilab-hilab sa chan or meron siyang feeling of nausea or gusto niyang mag-vomit, uh, ganon, I know immediately the medications to give them. Alam ko na nangangailangan yung pasyente ko ng metoclopramide para po hindi siya magduwal. Alam ko na yung pasyente kong may paghilab-hilab sa chan, kailangan niya ng HNBB or ng hyosin nl butyl bromide. But I know also that I am not in the proper position to give these medications to the patient. So again, that brings us to the point ni Virginia Henderson na hindi ko kailangan ng doctor's order to know what to do with my patient. Because I know as a nurse the medications to be given. But I just follow the certain philosophy na hindi ako pwedeng magbigay ng gamot without the doctor's order. So yun po yung point ni Virginia Henderson when she said that nurses do not follow the doctor's order. Rather, we follow a philosophy that allows physician to give orders to our patients and to the other members of the healthcare team. Ang isa pang paniwala ni Virginia Henderson is that many nursing roles and responsibilities overlap with those of the physicians. May mga bagay na ginagawa yung mga physician na sometimes ginagawa din po natin. Which is actually true. Kaya nga po, uh, Virginia Henderson asserts that we are not handmaidens of the doctors. Hindi po tayo katulong ng mga doktor kasi may mga bagay na ginagawa yung doktor na kaya din nating gawin. Or sometimes nag-overlap din po yun. Instead, uh, Virginia Henderson believes that we nurses have our own skill sets na pwede lang natin gawin and that there are also things that we can do that also needs the doctor's order. So yun po yung paniwala ni Virginia Henderson in our role as nurses in the nurse-physician relationship. Now, what does Virginia Henderson believe in our role as nurses in the healthcare team? Naniniwala si Henderson that every member of the healthcare team must work independently for the team to work in harmony. Naniniwala si Virginia Henderson that we nurses have our own roles and functions and that the absence of nurses will lead to the collapse of the healthcare system. Naniniwala din si Virginia Henderson na pantay-pantay po lahat ng ating mga worth in the healthcare system kasi may mga skill sets din ang mga midwives na hindi kayang gawin ng mga nurses. May mga skill sets din yung mga midwives or nurses na hindi kayang gawin ng mga doctors. So yun po yung ibig sabihin ni Virginia Henderson that we must work independently, stay in our lane because we have all our independent functions in the healthcare system. And that nurses like us should work and contribute in carrying out the total program of care. Dapat po ay tinutulungan natin all the members of the healthcare team so that we can give a holistic care to our patients. Now kung tatanungin nyo ako how the 14 fundamental needs theory of Virginia Henderson is accepted in the nursing community, I can say that even up to this day and age, the theory of Virginia Henderson is still accepted. Uh, in our nursing practice, Henderson's approach usually focuses on decision-making and is deliberate in such a way that in every step of the nursing process, the 14 fundamental needs of a person are always included, specifically in the assessment phase, planning phase, implementation phase, and even the evaluation phase. Alam nyo ba na pag tayo ay maraming mga, may mga pasyente tayo na 
may mga iba't ibang klase ng problema or mga uh, conditions, health conditions, we use the 14 fundamental needs by Virginia Henderson as a way to prioritize the patient's problems. Para po alam nating mga nurses ang iuunahin nating i-address, we use the 14 fundamental needs of Virginia Henderson. So, alam natin na nagagamit pa ito in our assessment phase planning and even implementation and evaluation. Now, you know why Virginia Henderson's theory, even if it's already very old, still holds ground? Because of its clarity. Yun po kasing uh, theory ni uh, Virginia Henderson na 14 fundamental needs of man, even if it has no structural form or diagram, unlike yung mga ibang theory ni uh, ni Napeplo, ni na Nightingale na may mga drawing-drawing, may mga diagram, dito po kay Virginia Henderson walang ganon. But, until now, it still holds true because uh, the 14 basic needs or fundamental needs of man are clearly defined and always consistent in her theory. Kaya nga po hanggang ngayon ay pinaniniwalaan pa rin po natin yon, and we still use it in practice, in education, in research because of its clarity. Aside from that, it's very simple. Her 14 fundamental needs theory is very simple even if our nursing profession is complex and that the 14 basic needs had already several revisions to make them concise so dati nag-start lang po siyang sobrang dami until such time na napakonsize po niya ni Virginia Henderson so it's very simple aside from that it's also generalizable Meaning, this knowledge of the 14 basic or fundamental needs of a person can be translated in different realms or aspects of nursing. So, pwede po siyang applicable sa pediatric nursing, sa community health nursing, sa maternal nursing. So, marami pong mga phases or mga aspects na pwede natin gamitin yung 14 fundamental needs theory ni Virginia Henderson. Ibig sabihin, it's generalizable. It, uh, it's very broad in, con in context and it also covers most areas of nursing practice. So that's the reason why until now, we are still discussing the theory of Virginia Henderson. Aside from that, it's also undeniable, undeniable that the theory of Virginia Henderson has accessibility. Henderson's theory is used in practice and the concepts are clinically significant as they are focused on assisting all the individuals under our nursing care to gain independence in relation to the performance of activities that are contributing to their health and recovery. Because we are still uh, using the 14 fundamental needs of the human being as our guiding principle in the care of our patients because when we perform these tasks or when we help our patients uh, attain these fund 14 fundamental needs we are able to assist them in their uh, health and recovery aside from that until now important pa rin po yung uh, 14 fundamental needs theory in Virginia Henderson and that the perspectives related to Henderson's theory open doors for development of other upcoming nursing theories and her definition of the unique function of a nurse has been widely read and accepted because of virginia henderson nagkaroon po tayo ng fresh perspective of our roles as nurses dati ang tingin natin sa mga nurses ay katulog ng mga doctor but because of virginia henderson's belief that we have our own roles and functions, we have independent and unique roles of nurses already because of her. So, yung 14 na uh, fundamental needs theory then ni Virginia Henderson was also uh, instrumental in the creation of other theories in the nursing profession. Now that we're done with Virginia Henderson, let's also look at the story behind Joyce Travelby and her human-to-human -human relationship model. Now, sino ba si Joyce Travelby? Joyce Travelby is actually a psychiatric nurse 
and she died at the age of 47 and she was not able to finish her doctorate degree although she was able to attain her bachelor's and master's degree in nursing and she was also an instructor in psychiatric nursing and she also published different articles and journals so she's also an author and she also published a book entitled Interpersonal Aspects of Nursing in 1996. Now, Joyce Travelby's work focused on the meaning of illness, suffering, pain, hopes, communication, interaction, empathy, sympathy, rapport, and therapeutic use of self. So ito po yung mga concepts na clarify ni Joyce Travelby in her human-to-human -human relationship model. Now, according to Joyce Travelby, it is important that we nurses are able to recognize the suffering of our patients so that we are able to care for them better. Di ba nga pag alam natin yung storya ng isang tao or kung ano yung nararamdaman niya, kung paano niya uh, nakuha yung sakit na yon, we are able to relate with them better as, as soon as we are able to establish our rapport with our patients and we understand their suffering, the nature of their suffering, mas gumaganda po yung nurse-patient relationships natin. Now, according to uh, Joyce Travelby, we need to understand the suffering of our patients. Suffering ranges from a feeling of unease or discomfort to extreme torture. And sometimes the suffering of our patients also vary in intensity, kung gaano siya kasakit, duration, kung gaano niyang katagal to nararamdaman, and even depth. So, our role as nurses is to help our patients to find meaning in their experience of suffering. And we also have to help them to find and maintain a sense of hope in that suffering. So, sabi ni uh, Travel B, nursing is an interpersonal process whereby the professional nurse practitioner will assist an individual, a family, or a community to prevent or cope with experience of illness and suffering and to help them find the meaning in these experiences. So, according to Travel B, dapat po maintindihan natin yung suffering ng isang tao sa sakit na yon and then we also help the person create a meaning out of the suffering that they are experiencing now travel b also believes that or views a person to be a human being and the person can either be a nurse and the patient and that a person is unique irreplaceable, and they are capable of growth, development, becoming, evolving, and changing. Naniniwala po si Travel B that if a person understands and recognizes their suffering and that they are able to assign meaning or value or importance to the suffering that they are experiencing, they will grow and change and evolve. Now, Travel B also believes that nursing should be accomplished through human relationships that usually begin during original encounter, progress through the stages of emerging identities, and then in, until such time that the nurse-patient relationship is already established. I'll give you an example of, uh, of Travel B's theory. Uh, according to Travel B, we have to help a person understand the meaning of their suffering. For example, we have a patient who was diagnosed of diabetes. So yung pasyente na yun, uh, that person is not able already to enjoy the finer things in life. For example, hindi na siya nakakakain ng cake, hindi na siya masyadong nakakakain ng mga rice, uh, or all those uh, with uh, sugars. Now, kung yung taong yun, uh, ang suffering niya is that that person no longer has the freedom to eat sweets na favorite niya. That's the suffering of a person. For us nurses, our role is to help that person understand 
and recognize their suffering. And then, kailangan natin silang tulungan to accept that suffering and also assign meaning into that. So what do you do? As a nurse, you tell them na, Sir, hindi na po pwede ang kumain ng sweets because these are the things that make you ill. So, sir, dapat po ay mag-start na po tayo na alagaan ang ating sarili because if we still eat sweets, even if we are already diabetic, then pwede pong magkaroon tayo ng mga organ failure and other things like that. So, if a person already understands that suffering and if a person accepts that, uh, that, that suffering has a meaning in their lives, then pag sinabi ng ng tao yun, ah, okay, so hindi na pala ako pwedeng kumain ng mga matatamis. So that person's uh, view or behavior has already evolved. That person has already changed. So as nurses, we have the responsibility to help that patient assign meaning to their own suffering or their condition. Yan po yung belief ni Travel B. According to Travel B, Health is measured by subjective and objective health. Pag sinabi po nating subjective health, it's the person's well-being in accordance with their self-appraisal and their physical, emotional, and spiritual status. Kung sinabi po ni patient na, ay, okay ako, I'm healthy, that's the belief of a person. That means that that is the subjective health of a person. Pag sinabi naman po nating objective health, It is the absence of any discernible disease, disability, or defects as measured by physical examination, lab tests, and assessment. So masasabi po natin na healthy yung patient based on our objective findings. Pag yung pasyente po after yung physical examination, lab test ay napatunayan na wala po talaga siyang sakit. And Uh, Joyce Travel B also viewed as an environment in her theory uh, pero hindi siya masyadong clear. The environment aspect in her nursing meta paradigm was not defined although human conditions and life experiences encountered by all men are considered suffering, hope, pain, and illness which are also associated within the environment. So usually, yung thought po ni Joyce Travel B, when it comes to environment, does not really pertain on the external environment, but it pertains on the internal environment of suffering, of hope and pain and illness. So yun po yung view ni Joyce Travel B of what environment really is. Now, kaya po tinawag na human-to-human -human relationship theory, yung theory ni Joyce Travel B is because Joyce Travel B looks at the person to be the nurse and the patient. And during their original encounter, yung first time nyo po na makita yung inyong mga pasyente, malayo pa yung loob nyo sa isa't isa. Because you do not know each other yet. You do not know the person's suffering, the person's illness or condition. But when you spend some time with your patient, pag nag interview na kayo, nag-physical assessment na kayo, nakakausap nyo na po yung pasyente during your communication, what happens is that there is emerging identities. Naiintindihan mo na yung point of view ni patient and yung patient mo gumagaan na din yung loob sa'yo. So kung titignan natin sa diagram, lumalapit na po yung ating nurse and patient together because they are starting to understand each other's sufferings and point of view. Now, if a nurse continues this relationship with the patient, mas gumagaan yung loob nila and then there is a developed sense of empathy. The nurse will now understand fully the motivations and the sufferings of the client and that the nurse will have her internal motivation to help the patient. Sasabihin niya, ah, okay. So, ganito pala naghihirap yung pasyente ko. Ah, okay. I have this responsibility to help the patient, to, be, to alleviate the patient from their suffering. And then, pag nagiging close na yung ating mga pasyente, kasi nga, na, na, yung pasyente, nawawala na yung mga signs and symptoms niya because the nurse is helping her. Tama po. 
sa may empathy kasi yung nurse kaya tinutulungan niyo yung pasyente and yung pasyente naman na nakaka-receive ng nursing care nawawala na yung kanyang mga signs and symptoms what happens the the nurse can also use this opportunity to uh, make that person that sick individual create a meaning out of their suffering. So, sasabihin niya, Sir, kaya po kayo nahihirapan ng ganyan kasi ganito po kasi yung nangyayari or ginagawa ninyo. Sir, may I educate you about your suffering so that you will learn from it and so that you will not experience that ever again. So, ang nangyayari po is that when both of them work together to alleviate and assign meaning to their suffering, that is the meaning of true nursing. So, dapat po meron tayong nurse-patient relationship and we can only give proper care to our patients if we take time to understand them better. Now, let us look at the nurse-patient interaction phases according to Joyce Travel B. Yun pong mga pinakita ko kanina. In, during the original encounter, it is described as the first impression of the nurse to the sick person and vice versa. So ito po yung mga first encounter or first time nilang mag-meet sa isa't isa. So both of them are still strangers to each other. The nurse and the patient see each other in stereotype or traditional roles. Okay? During the emerging identities naman po, the nurse and the patient already starts to perceive each other as unique individuals and this time the relationship already begins to form. So nagsi-share na ng mga bagay-bagay si uh, si patient sa nurse so sasabihin naman ni nurse ah okay this person is a unique individual and i am understanding them better because of the communication that we are doing so during the stage of empathy this is the ability uh, to share in the person's experience so nakaka-relate na po si nurse sa experience ni patient and the result of this is the ability to expect the behavior of the individual with whom he or she empathized. So, ibig sabihin po nito, the nurse is already able to understand the suffering of the person. Therefore, the nurse is also able to expect the behavior that will come from the patient as well. So, sa, sa stage po of sympathy, it happens when the nurse wants to lessen the cause of the client's suffering. So, dito na po nagkakaroon tayo ng genuine desire to help a patient. So, dito na po nagsustart yung ating uh, talagang pagtulong ng kusang loob sa ating mga pasyente. After understanding them from empathy, nagkakaroon na tayo ng genuine concern for our patients to alleviate their suffering. And we also use our sense of rapport to lessen our client's suffering. And when we establish rapport or trust in during the nurse-patient interaction, we are able to gain the trust and confidence of our patients and at the same time gain their cooperation. So nakikita nyo po, no? it's very important for us to spend time with our patients. Talk to them so that we know how to properly address their concerns and alleviate their suffering. Now, if you ask me if the human-to-human -human relationship theory of Joyce Travel B is still accepted, yes, it still is. Usually, practice po siya in hospice care or in patients or in areas where there are patients who are old and dying. So, dito po yung mga may cancer patients na terminally ill. So, dito po pumapasok yung human-to-human relationship natin. We are able to use the theory of Joyce Travel B to gain empathy and sympathy to our patients to alleviate their suffering and to help them gain a dignified and respectful and peaceful death that they need. Aside from that, ginagamit po natin ang ating human-to-human uh, -human relationship theory and education. Joyce Travel V's concepts usually serve as a better assistance for student nurses uh, who are helping individuals to understand the meaning of their illness and suffering. And also, we use the human-to-human -human relationship theory in various uh, research studies that are uh, specifically on death and dying. So, ginagamit po pa rin until now yung theory ni Joyce Travel V. 
Now, hindi po ganun kasikat yung human-to-human -human relations relationship theory ni Joyce Travelby because we have several qualms regarding their, her theory, I should say. Now, uh, based on clarity, yung pong theory ni Joyce Travelby, uh, majority of the definitions that she forwarded are not consistent in clarity and origin. And some of the definitions that she used in her own theory, were just lifted from the Webster's Dictionary. So, hindi po siya nagbigay ng other conceptual meanings sa mga concepts na pinapakita niya kasi galing po sa dictionary yung mga ibang definitions na ginawa niya. And she also used different terms with the same definition. So, medyo confusing po yung kanyang mga concepts na ginamit. So, when it comes to clarity, hindi po ganun ka-clear yung theory ni Joyce Travelby. Aside from that, uh, her theory contains so many different variables. That means that her theory is not simple at all. Kaya nga po, hindi siya ganun kasikat kasi aside from the fact that it's confusing, it's very complex in nature. Aside from that, in terms of generality, her theory has a wide scope of application. So, pwede po siyang ginagamit sa mga uh, opportunities or instances wherein there is a nurse-patient encounter or kung meron mga life-changing events, nagagamit po yung human-to-human -human relationship theory. When in, in terms of accessibility, her theory appears to have a low measure of empirical soundness because it lacks simplicity and majority of the research studies na uh, ginagamit yung mga nurse theor nursing theory ay hindi ginagamit yung human-to-human -human relationship theory. Kaya when you look at the internet, kokonti lamang po yung mga research studies that used the human-to-human -human relationship theory ni Joyce Travel kasi nga hindi po siya ganun kasimple and it has so many variables. Kaya majority of the nurse nursing researchers that we have do not really use the theory of Joyce Travel B. Now, in terms of importance, ginagamit naman po siya because it can describe, explain, and predict a certain phenomenon. But again, it's not as uh, popular and usable as other nursing theor theories that we have already. And that ends our pre-recorded lecture for the subject, Theoretical Foundations of Nursing. Now, to check your attendance, ganito po yung gagawin natin. You'll have to take a selfie of a person you love and uh, tell me something interesting about them in the captions. Uh, send that in our group chat. So, pwede pong ka-selfie nyo ang inyong mga magulang, mga kapatid, pet, or yung mga jowa nyo. And then, you tell me something about them that is interesting para mag-jowa reveal naman po tayo sa ating, mga, uh, sa ating GC. With that being said, I hope that you learned something from me today. May I request everyone to please turn on their cameras so that we can have our picture taking. Mag-on na po tayo ng camera para po mag-end na din na tayo ng ating discussion.